Hello and welcome back to Introduction to Number Theory. In this video we will solve a typical task, small problem, uh, using Wales theorem. Take a look at this inequality. Well, n is an integer. It's written here that it's positive integer. Actually, it doesn't matter. It can be integer, any integer. Uh, and we understand from Kronecker's theorem that there are infinitely many such n that satisfy this equation. However, uh, we would like to know, well, how often is the sign of a natural number greater than one half? Well, first we need to define what it means how often and then solve this task. So now let's uh, define the frequency. First we need to uh, find all m from 1 to n uh, such that sine of m is greater than one half, then we count the number of such m and then divide it by n and this will uh, give us the frequency of uh, sine of m being greater than one half uh, for m from one to n and if we want to uh, find the frequency in general, then we need to find the limit of this value when n tends to infinity. So we need to determine to what this tends. Now let's do some trigonometry. We understand that we need a trigonometric circle to deal with sine. Okay, so this is a trigonometric circle and n as a natural number uh, gives us marks on this circle. Say 1 is somewhere over here, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. And the set of uh, those points on the circle where sine is greater than 1 half uh, forms an interval from over here, well, sine equal to one half is somewhere here, then we find the corresponding points on the circle, it's pi over six and, well, it's five pi over six these points. So being greater, well sine is greater than one half if uh, the point on the circle is somewhere somewhere on the top of the circle between these two points. So how do we determine how often the this point one two, three, four, and so on, the integer numbers, how often they get into this interval over here. Well, in order to determine that, let us shrink the circle, because now the length of the circle is equal to 2 pi. Uh, let us shrink the circle so that its length uh, becomes equal to 1, well, 2 pi is greater than 6, then it will be a rather small circle. However, I will not draw a small circle. I will not draw a small circle, I will draw a rather large circle. And I ask you to imagine that its length is 
equal to 1. Well, the real circle with length 1 would be this small. <coughs> now, we imagine that this circle has length 1, and then connect these points with the center. And our interval is now shrinked to this interval here. And all of the integer points on the trigonometric circle have corresponding points on the smaller one. And so on. So now the question is, um, how often within the smaller circle these marked points appear on the upper interval? Now notice that uh, if we take a grasshopper and place it into this point and uh, force it jump uh, on the smaller circle, then its step, the length of its step, will be equal to 1 over 2 pi. Why is it so? Well, because uh, it's a small grasshopper and the large grasshopper was jumping along the big circle with length 1. And we shrinked the big circle uh, this amount of times. This number here is, of course, irrational. So we can apply Weyl's theorem to this situation and we understand that the number of um, the number of uh, m such that 1 m n and at the same time the fractional part of m alpha belongs to this interval here, well, where by i we mean this interval here. Well, this is what we call interval i. If we count the number of popping into the interval divided by n and take the limit we will gain the length of this interval well, what is the length of this interval let's calculate it um, first we calculate the length of the interval of the big circle well it is uh, pi over three pi over three it's uh, length is 2 third multiplied by pi right right so when we shrink to the small circle we divide all lengths by 2 pi so it's one third and we understand that uh, the smaller grasshopper getting into the small interval uh, is equivalent to the big grasshopper getting into the big interval. This way, according to the Wales theorem, we calculated the limit of frequencies and it is the answer to our question. So the problem is solved.